Lost Talk Radio. Good afternoon. This is Michael Stiggle. We're a live session today with Dr. Brand, Adele Brand. I believe she's on the other line. I'm going to put her through in a second here. Um, and we're going to have a live show um, today. She's a holistic dentist, and we're going to talk about what she offers. So let's see here if I can patch her, patch her in here. Just one moment here. Oh, let's see. Hello, Dr. Brand? Oh, let's see. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, it's me. It's Dr. Brand. Hi, how are you? (laughs) Good. Welcome to the show. You're on the air, just so you know. Yes, Um, thank you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And again, I uh, just wanted to let people know that you're a holistic dentist from New York. You've been um, in this practice for about 30 years and that you also offer a few other uh, modalities. Um, I believe you're a hypnotherapist and a nutritionalist, and also you, um, um, there's one other thing that you do, too. Oh, I do um, a lot of stuff. It's all good. (laughs) Anything to promote health, that's what what I do. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, well, anyway, we're live. We've got the show getting, you know, getting ready to get it started. Um, Let's see here. Um, one of the reasons why we have you on the show today, there's a lot of different things that you do in your dentist practice that other dentists th- don't do, which, you know, promote health. And that's one of the reasons why I think, you know, anybody that's that's listening to this podcast needs to stay tuned because we're going to go over some things that are, you know, they're very important things that they wouldn't necessarily know if they – you know, went to the dentist, they wouldn't look for these things, and you're doing some of these great things that promote health. And uh, so let's see here. <clears throat> okay, so could you do me a favor? Could you tell us where exactly you're located if someone wanted to, 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 to come to your practice? Sure. Yeah, I'm right smack in the middle of Manhattan in New York City. We're right there on 34th Street, right down the block from Macy's at Herald Square or opposite the Empire State Building. So we're easy to get to, you know, all the mass transit is there. And um, we're, um, if you, well, actually, if you want to contact us, the best way to contact us is through the website. You can go to thebrandwellnesscenter.com or you can call us directly at our phone number, which is 212-947-0073, and that's also found on the website if you want to contact us. Awesome. Now, let me – well, I've already told everybody, I guess I answered the first question. I've told everybody that you've been doing this for about 30 years. Um, I'd like to know, can you give us a little uh, bit of information about where you went to school? Sure. Um, I went to um, New York University College of Dentistry. I did graduate uh, in 1981, and um, I was a general dentist for many of those years, but then I found holistic dentistry through my own health challenges, and that's how I got in this path. But at NYU, they teach you, you know, the good basic dentistry that you need to know to fix teeth and and to help people uh, with their cavities and gum disease and all that kind of stuff. But we incorporate the holistic as well, and that was advanced training um, after dental school. Oh, wonderful. Now, let's see here. Does your uh, dental practice accept uh, dental insurance? We are a fee-for-service practice. Uh, We do not accept any insurance directly. However, if you uh, bring in the insurance papers, we will fill them out for you and submit them electronically so that you can get reimbursed. Usually within seven to ten business days, everybody gets reimbursed. And I have to say the reimbursement rates are pretty good. It's not like we're overly priced or anything because we're holistic. We are very fair with our uh, uh, fees for a, a private office in Manhattan. So if you have dental insurance, and certainly we can uh, help you work with it so that you can maximize your benefits. Oh, awesome. And so the next question I had is, can someone uh, self-pay? Can a patient self-pay at your office? (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Yes, we we do (laughs) accept all major credit cards, uh, cash, personal checks with a photo ID, and we do have financing available through uh, uh, Care Credit. And um, that all that information is found on the website, which is thebrandwellnesscenter.com. 
Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Now, let's see here. How can someone become a patient? Say I, I walked into your, your office today um, and I wanted to become a new patient. How would I go about doing that? Very easy. You can just call us at the phone number that I gave before, or you can certainly contact us through the website, and uh, we will just set up that appointment for you and give you some forms to fill out. Uh, in the forms is your dental history and your medical history. We do go through the medical history quite comprehensively because many of our patients have a lot of health challenges that conventional medicine and conventional dentistry has not been able to solve for them, and because of our integrative approach, uh, we are able to help many of these people to heal from uh, many chronic illnesses, uh, at least to detox and to feel much better th- through through working the um, the health of the mouth. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, let's see here. I w- I'd like to ask you, how did you know that you wanted to become a dentist? How did you How did you get the feel for it? You know, it's a life's journey. Every everybody tries to figure out what they should do with themselves when they're growing up. I was I was always into medicine. I did volunteer in many different uh, kinds of facilities, uh, uh, hospitals, and and other medical places, and I, I enjoyed helping people. That was always primary. And I think it, what it was is that I didn't want to be a medical doctor because it was too much life and death type of stuff. And I enjoyed the creativity of the dentistry you know, because there is a lot of arts and crafts to it, if you will. And for me, it just seemed to make sense. Oh, that's, that sounds, seems like a good reason. Now, let's <laughs> see here. Um, now, how is holistic dentistry different from uh, regular dental practice? practice you know, that's a, that's a terrific question. And I'd say, how many hours do you have? <laughs> because I think... <laughs> Yeah, if you ask a different holistic dentist, they'll all have a different answer for you. But I think the basic, you know, bottom line with a holistic dental practice is that we try to do things that are most biocompatible for the patient. We focus on whole body wellness, and we have a more comprehensive approach. We just don't go in there and fix a tooth. We look at how that tooth is affecting perhaps the rest of your body and other health. I mean, I think most people know that periodontal disease um, is very prevalent in, in people over the age of 40. I think like 80% of the population has it. And, and I think most people know that when you have periodontal disease, which is gum disease, um, you're more prone to heart attacks and strokes. I mean, that's conventional thinking. So in our practice, you know, we diagnose things like that and give you uh, tools to work with so that you can turn this around. So not only are you improving your gums to help your teeth stay in your mouth longer, you're also helping your whole body health so you won't get a heart attack prematurely. Yeah, it sounds like you you folks really care in uh, about your patients and that that you you deliver your services with compassion, which is which is a great thing. So it seems like, you know, uh they get a lot of value out of their dollar when they go to brand wellness uh for for dental service. That that that's really good to hear. Now, I I'd, I'd like to ask how often should a patient be seen by a dentist for ru- routine oral health? You know, that really depends on the person. Um, most people, twice a year is fine, but if you've got some, you know, long-term standing problems where you find your gums are bleeding or you got little sensitivities here and there, certainly you should go more frequently if something's out of order. And if you have chronic things like uh, gum disease or other issues or even things like bad breath, you probably want, want to go a little more frequently to, to get that under control because, you know, the health of your mouth is a reflection of the entire health of, the, of your entire body. So by getting your oral health under control, your physical body will certainly be healthier. Oh, wow, that's that's great. Now, what are some of your approaches to periodontal disease and treatment? Um, you know, we, we take a different path than conventional uh, dentists might take. Um, most of the time in conventional dentistry, if you have gum disease or periodontal disease, um, they they would suggest uh, deep cleanings, which is which is good. Or sometimes they even suggest surgery if the things are really out of control. Um, we're not big believers in that. We try to do things to get the body to heal itself. So certainly doing things like flossing are important. You know, that's a number one. If you're not flossing, you're doing a big disservice for your entire health. And brushing, you know, on a regular basis. But th- there is other things you can do for gum disease at home in the convenience of your own home. Uh, things like oil pulling, you know, something as simple as that 
will um, help your gums improve. It'll also help your entire body improve because oil pulling has been around for centuries. It is an old Ayurvedic techni- technique that pulls toxins out through the meridians of the mouth, through the teeth and the gums and, and the tongue. And when you oil pull, um, you're not just um, helping your teeth to heal, but you're helping uh, your entire body to heal. And it, it, uh, oil pulling, for anyone who's not familiar with it, is a very simple thing to do in the sense that all you need is a tablespoon of a good quality organic oil. Um, conventionally, it was used with sesame oil, but in the dental field, we always recommend coconut oil because of its antiviral, antibacterial um, properties. So it helps reduce the bacteria and the bugs in your mouth. And also, coconut oil for the teeth is really very therapeutic because it actually actually has been shown to help the tooth enamel, which is the outside surface of the tooth, to remineralize. So if you have any um, little pitting in your teeth or sensitivity or even tiny cavities, you can actually re- reverse them with oil pulling. So oh, wow. it, it, it's a good habit to get into if you do it on a daily basis. It will certainly improve your overall oral health as well as your body health because you're also uh, pulling out the toxins. And the other way oil pulling works um, is it also uh, sublingually under the tongue you will absorb the essential fatty acids that are in the oils. And, you know, certainly uh, the good oils like olive oil and coconut oil, oil have a lot of good essential fatty acids. So by absorbing them directly sublingually into the bloodstream, you're bypassing the uh, gastric juices, and therefore you don't have to worry about uh, whether or not you will will absorb it through the intestines because it's going right into the bloodstream. Sort of like when people take homeopathic remedies and put it right under the tongue. It goes right in to the bloodstream, or even if they take a nitroglycerin tablet, if they're having a heart attack, you know, that that goes right in, you know, because you take it sublingually, and it's very effective very quickly. So people do oil pulling besides receiving their teeth getting, you know, whiter and and stronger and less sensitive. It also improves your gums because of all the uh, antibacterial effects of it, but it will improve your entire body. I mean, I think one of the immediate things people see with oil pulling is things like their skin getting better because they're getting all these wonderful uh, essential fatty acids coming into the body, uh, helping them their skin to heal. So, oh, wow. So, so the periodontal disease, I mean, you can do stuff at home, but if you're working with a holistic dentist, you know, there are other things we do. Um, think we In our office, we use lasers, which are really therapeutic. Uh, conventional dentists probably don't use them for the gum disease, but the lasers are really great because they not only sterilize the uh, the periodontal pocketing that's underneath the gum where the bugs are living, it, it kills them off by sterilizing it. It also uh, stimulates new connective tissue growth so that you can get reattachment wow. of the gum. Yeah, it's, it, it's amazing, this stuff. So you get reattachment uh, of the gums, <laughs> and, and the bone actually may start growing, uh, going up a higher level if, you, if you've had bone loss. Now, it doesn't happen in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. It's, it's, it has to be done over time on a regular basis. And with that, you have to maintain extremely good oral uh home hygiene to uh, help the lasers to be more effective. And the other thing we also recommend for periodontal disease, see, it's a pretty big topic you just <laughs> approached right there. <laughs> we could be here for days. But anywho, um, the, we also suggest using a magnetic irrigator. Um, basically, it's like a water pick, but it has magnets in it. And we have them in the office. We do uh, uh, dispense them to our periodontal patients, and they're really very effective because what the magnetic irrigators do is they create a charge on the tooth surface so that the teeth actually repel the plaque. So if if you floss and you brush, but you may not have gotten everything because, you you know, you weren't so careful or there's some deep pocketing, if you use this uh, irrigator, which is like a water pick, but it has magnets in it, now you've got a charge on your tooth, and the teeth will actually repel the plaque that's on there. And oh, um, wonderful. I think yeah, it's really very effective. We get uh, good results with people who have gum uh, challenges, you know, trying to uh, get this periodontal disease to turn around. And I think, you know, the other thing, you know, getting back to uh, just whole body health is nutrition. You know, you got to take a lot of antioxidants if you're going to uh, get any inflammation to uh, reduce itself, whether it's in the body or it's in the gums. So antioxidants like vitamin C or any of the, you know, brightly colored fruits and vegetables will help. Yeah, blueberries. The blueberries, <laughs> you got it. And I and I think the other the other nutrient which is really great for gum disease is coenzyme Q ten or it's also called ubiquinol. 
So you can buy that in any health food store. I mean, no, no, there should not be any bad side effects from any of these uh, unless you're taking, like, tremendous massive doses. But within a reasonable amount, you should see good results all around, not just in terms of the gum disease but your general health. And uh, just sort of something else that might be important because when, you know, you come to my office, um, we also take your saliva pH to check for acidity or alkalinity of your saliva because that's sort of a reflection of how your general health is. And we find with a lot of people that have periodontal disease or even other health issues that they're, um, that the pH of their saliva is very acidic. And when you have an oh, acidic wow. environment, you're going to have inflammation. And if you have inflammation, you're going to have pain. So it's really important to, to look at it from any aspects because when you can get the pH of the saliva uh, more neutral, usually about a 7.0, then, you know, the whole body's going to shift and the gum disease will have a better chance at healing. You know, it, there's no just one answer to fixing everything. There's a lot of ways to approach this. And, um, you know, th- that's sort of the way I look at everything. It's almost like it's a puzzle because, you know, my philosophy is that there's no disease caused by a deficiency of any drug or any surgery. <laughs> so when yep. you come from that philosophy, you've got to figure out what happened to your body that you got out of, out of balance that you have to get back into balance. And most of the time it's usually stress-related or it's a poor diet, you know, too much fast food with, with a lot of chemicals added to it. So we have to just be more conscious and aware so that, you know, we can do the best we can to help ourselves to heal. Yeah. Now, the other question I had is how has Obamacare affected your practice? Has it increased the number of patients that you see, um, you know, or has it has it affected your, your practice at all? I, I have not seen anything. I'm not even that familiar with Obamacare and dental, to be honest with you. So I, I could not really say about that. I know it's affected a lot of people with um, the medical health coverage, but not the dental health coverage. I know there is something involved, but we're not in that because we are, are out of network for just about every insurance. And I think with the Obamacare, it's something that if you wanted to join as a dentist, you may have to have signed up to be part of it, and we are not uh, involved with that at all. Okay. Yeah. And what are some natural ways to battle uh, bad breath? <laughs> We've all experienced, you know, walking past someone in, 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 well, in our life and, and they've got bad breath. Yeah, you know, I think the worst thing you can do for bad breath is use an alcoholic mouthwash. You know, and there's so many out there, and I won't mention names, because alcohol in general tends to make your mouth drier, and anything that makes your mouth drier will make the bad breath worse. So from that perspective, if you're going to use a mouthwash, certainly look for one that has no alcohol in it. Um, On top of that, um, there are many aspects to bad breath, and it could be due to, um, you know, just poor oral hygiene. You're not flossing and brushing enough. It could be accumulation of uh, plaque and, and, you know, bacteria on your tongue. So you should always brush your tongue when you brush your teeth or perhaps even do some tongue scraping. Uh, the other issue we find with bad breath, because we do do a lot of bad breath uh, treatment in the office, and we're really pretty successful at it, I'd say 99%, because we've really covered all the different bases of, of what can cause it. The other aspect of uh, bad breath would be sinus issues. If you have like a post-nasal drip or, coast, or uh, really congested sinuses, that's a major factor in that all that stuff dripping down the back of your throat and the bacteria just sitting there and you know, creating that smell. And, of course, the other issue is uh, digestive issues because a lot of people are walking around and uh, they don't have regular bowel movements daily. I mean, in a normal, healthy person, they should be having at least one bowel movement a day and probably more like two or three. You should have one every time after you eat. But if you're backed up and constipated, you're going to find out that, that all those um, those uh, odors that are, or the, all that stuff that's in your digestive tract that's uh, sitting there fermenting, if you will, is going to back up. And, <laughs> and, and yeah, fermenting is a nice word. Uh, we'll give you, we'll back up and give you a bad breath. And and I think the other issue with uh, breath issues in general is the medications. A lot of people are on medications today, probably more than ever before. And if you're taking any kind of medication, many of them, and I'd say a good majority of them, will um, cause you to be dehydrated. So if you're noticing that, you have to drink a lot more water to compensate for the dehydration that um, these medications are causing. And and you know when you have a dry mouth, and, and when you do have that dry mouth, your breath is going to be worse. 
That's why yeah. when you, now, you, you, you yes, yeah. I was gonna say if you chew gum, it, everything you know your breath gets better because the saliva is flowing. Oh, okay. Now, what are the benefits of being a mercury-free dental practice? I see that your dental practice is mercury-free. Okay. Well, mercury-free is, is you know that's a big topic. Uh, are, are you familiar with the whole aspect of mercury toxicity and in, in the in those silver mercury fillings that people have in their mouth? I uh, yeah, I heard years ago that it was it's it's unhealthy. It's it's they put poison in people's mouths to fill their to fill their cavities. Years that's ago. right. All right. So the the thing yeah. to bear in mind is those pretty silver mercury fillings that you have in your mouth. They're called amalgams. They are about fifty percent mercury, and mercury is the second most toxic substance on the planet, right after plutonium, which is radioactive. And you certainly would not put plutonium in your mouth or in your teeth because it's highly toxic. And so why would you put the second most toxic substance on the earth in your in your teeth? So there are better choices, and the choices that we offer people are things that don't have heavy metals, like mercury. And um, people are looking for that because you find with a lot of people that have neurological problems like multiple sclerosis or Alzheimer's or um, even autoimmune diseases like lupus or, um, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of them out there. Um, these are all people that usually test for high um, heavy metals in their system. So they're, they're, fine, they're trying to get a little control by removing one source of it because the mercury fillings that are in those teeth, they're not, they look stable, and um, the American Dental Association says they are stable, but if you go on YouTube, you'll find many videos that show how unstable they really are, and they, they show the, uh, the fumes coming out from the mercury fillings every time you eat on them, every time you brush your teeth, every time you drink something like a hot liquid because the heat will make the mercury fumes come out a little bit faster. So you want to just, you know, if you have health issues and you're trying to find, uh, you know, better health for your life and your family, you want to get these things removed from your teeth uh, and replace them with something that's less toxic. Um, the only thing I should mention is when you do that, um, you want to go to a dentist who's aware of all the uh, safety protocol that's necessary to remove that. You can't just go to a dentist and say, hey, I don't want these silver fillings in my mouth. You know, let's just replace them because they'll just drill them out and the, and the aerosol will go everywhere and the pieces will go down your throat and you, you'll be breathing and inhaling and eating this stuff as they're drilled out. So you want some safety protection when um, that's done. So you need to go to a, um, a dentist who's aware of the implications of removing this stuff safely. And, you know, we, certainly we do that. And if, if your listeners are interested, they can go to a website called IAOMT.org, which is the International Academy of Oral and Medicine Toxicology. And they have a list of all the dentists broken down by state, by, broken down by country, who practice uh, safety protocol for the uh removal of these toxic mercury fillings. So that's why we're mercury-free. Yeah, we're mercury-free for that. And I've seen the effects when people get this stuff removed, I mean, within a very short period of time, assuming they get them removed safely, and then they start detoxing their body with many different supportive techniques, which we can tell you about in the office. Um, Within a period of of a very short time, usually three to six months, a lot of their neurological symptoms go away. I've had patients who who had uh, the brain lesions from multiple sclerosis. They find it on the uh, MRIs when they do the brain scans, and within a short period of time, these lesions disappear from the brain. So everything is fixable in the body once you figure out how to uh, approach it to to undo the damage uh, of of these toxins. I I also want to just mention, um, I mean, I did write a book, I wrote two books actually on detoxing from the environmental toxins and uh, toxins, um, and I also wrote a book including that, but also um, detoxing from the energetic aspects of, of the toxic stuff that's in your environment, whether it's people or other things. So um, I just wanted to mention quickly, those two books can be found on Amazon. Uh, the one book uh, where you can detox from the physical aspects, like the mercury, and simple t- techniques that you can do, like the oil pulling and body brushing and stuff like that. It's in the one book called My Secrets to Regaining Health. And the other book, which um, talks about the phys- physical as well as the energetic aspects of healing, is called Enlightened Indigo Child. And I did write that with my daughter, who's a highly sensitive person and a clear everything person. And, you know, 
know, we've just, that book had to be written because there's lots of people out there with lots of high sensitivities who are picking up everything energetically and physically from other people, and they need to know that they can be well and that they can heal themselves. So these books are very important. And if you go to my website, thebrainwellnesscenter.com, there are links to the books if anyone's interested yep. in that. Yeah, looks like we have three minutes left. I, oh first, I, I just want to say this. Yeah, well, it was a half hour show originally. I wanted to do an hour show, but we were only able to to fit in a half hour. It looks like we really we're going to pray about having you back on the show. We'd love to have you as a guest back on the show oh, sure. because you are you're very very knowledgeable and informative. Um, and just your wealth of information, and, and I, I actually, you know, I'm, I'm hosting the show, but I love and enjoy hearing you speak um, about all of these different topics that have to do with dental health, uh, because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are, they just don't have the knowledge, and, yeah. you know, I'm thankful that you're here sharing it today, and um, I want you to just tell people again how they can get in touch with you to book an appointment um, and, you know, just give yourself a, a, a good plug out there so people okay. people can get in touch with you. Okay. <laughs> the best the best way to contact us is through the website, thebrandwellnesscenter.com. If you can't find it, just put my name in, Idell Brand, and you'll go right to where I am, and that's the best way to contact me. Okay. And again, I you know, I had some quite other questions that I wanted to to ask you, but I'm not going to have time, but I think uh-huh. I am going to ask you one question because it, it it it's a question that I had uh I wanted to know what is digital computerized x-rays just in brief. Okay, yeah, they're, they're taking x-rays, but we do use a computer system. The beauty of it is that there's no dip and dunk tanks. We're not poisoning up the world with all these uh the solutions that have to be thrown in the garbage, but there's a 90% reduction in uh, radiation when you get the computerized x-rays. Hopefully most dentists out there have them, and the pictures uh, appear instantaneously on the uh, screen of the computer so you can see all the great details of what's going on. But it's the way to go if you want to avoid radiation and just get a better picture of your tooth. Okay, we've got about 60 seconds left. We've we've got about sixty seconds left. I again want to thank you, Doctor Adele Brand, and I want to let people know that she's also a Reiki master, a hypnotherapist, nutritionalist, and um, you know she incorporates this into her her practice. So I mean, there's many reasons that you can you you know go to her website, like she said, book an appointment. Um, and again, I, I just want to thank her, and we hope to have her back on the show. Um, it's been a delight uh, speaking to you. You're, you're very well versed, and you speak very well. Um, thank you again for this opportunity to have been able to interview you. Well, thank you, Michael. It's been my pleasure. I look forward okay. to speaking with you and your and your, your your listeners again. Okay. Well, thank you. And again, uh, anybody that wants to listen to this, uh, you know, it's going to be on podcast. If you have any comments or or, or anything like that, you can go to Spiritual Health on Facebook, and you can Facebook me again. My name's Michael Stiggle. I want to thank you for listening to the show. And thank you, uh, Dr. Brand. You're welcome. All right, bye-bye. Yep, bye-bye.